Hello, another day and another suitably low-tech video. Um, if you're watching this, then first of all, thanks for watching. Um, please do like and subscribe to our channel so that you can see our other solving videos and we hope you find this useful. So today we're going to look at how to solve a arrow Sudoku puzzle, also known as Sudoku arrow. Um, and first of all, let's look at the rules and then we'll go through some of the implications of the rule set. Um, which may not be immediately obvious. So the first rule is reassuringly simple because it's the same as standard Sudoku. <clears throat> you must place the numbers one to nine once in each row, each column, and in each three by three box that compose the Sudoku arrow grid. Now you're probably noticing there's one very clear addition to the standard Sudoku grid, and that is these regions here where we have a circled square and then a line with a arrow head and that gives the puzzle the name arrow sudoku and the rule here is quite simple but the logic it introduces is quite subtle and can be quite difficult to tease out um, particularly at the start of a puzzle and that rule says the following the number that is placed in the square at the top of each arrow that contains a circle is the sum of the digits along the body of that arrow so we actually have a nine given here so that is the sum of the value in these two squares um, now normal sudoku rules apply uh, as mentioned so that means that within each box a number cannot repeat um, along the body of an arrow however if the body of the arrow does cross different regions like here so it goes diagonally then a number can repeat um, so for instance here this big long arrow here there's no problem at all having a two there and a two there for instance because they're in different boxes different regions but you couldn't have a two here and a two here because that would break the normal sudoku rule that you cannot repeat a number within a region so let's have a quick look at the logic that this introduces and the most immediate um, piece of logic is to know that every single square um, that contains the uh, circle which is the uh, head of an arrow cannot contain the number one and the converse of that is that the squares along the body of an arrow cannot contain a nine um, because clearly if they contain the nine then given that the maximum number at the head of an arrow is nine there's no way that could be valid so armed with that simple rule, you can actually make quite a few um, deductions or pencil marks right at the start of a puzzle. Um, for instance, looking down this column here, where we have five circled squares, then we know the one can actually only go in one of four uh, locations, which it may or may not be useful to pencil mark in, depending on the difficulty of the puzzle and Looking at the first row, we have the same thing again. Um, the one can only go in one of four places. Uh, now that can often become quite important um, further down the solving path of a puzzle. And normally by looking at some of the arrows um, that are either contained within a region or are longer, um, you can really reduce the possible values um, quite quickly, which is very important with a arrow Sudoku um, because these regions give you so much extra information there's normally very few givens you can see this puzzle has uh, six and you can get down to a pair of givens um, quite easily and that means you can't really do much normal sudoku at the beginning whereby you you know look at the threes in each row and column and see where the threes could go in other rows and columns there's so little information at the start because of the arrows that you really need to look at them straight away so let's just have a look at a couple of instances of the logic um, that we can use with regards to the arrows. So let's look at this first one here at the top left of the grid. So we know that the sum of these three squares is to be placed in here. So the lowest possible values for these three digits, we have a three given, is one, two, and three. Um, remembering that they're all in the same box, so we cannot repeat. So therefore the lowest this can be is a six, and of course the highest it could be is a nine now let's think about whether it could be 
an 8, well it could, because these would then sum to 5, so 4 and 1, but could it be 7? Well no it couldn't, um, because these would need to sum to 4, and since we've already used the 3 here, then we can't have a 3 and 1, because that would repeat, we can't have a 2 and 2, because that would repeat, so this is 6, 8 or 9, and that means that the maximum digits for these uh, is 5, these are one, two, four, or five. Now let's have a look at this massive um, region over here. Um, so this has got one, two, three, four, five um, squares along its body. And we know um, that these three uh, squares all belong to the same box, so they must add to at least six. Um, and therefore this is going to have clearly quite a high total. Does it have to be 9? Well it could actually be 8. Um, if this was 1, 2, 3, let's say, then we could have 1 and 1 here to sum to 8. Um, so it could actually be 8. So it's 8 or 9. Um, and these clearly must sum to 6 or 7. And these must sum to 2 or three. Three is the maximum they can sum to. So these are one, two, one, two, and these are one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So this has instantly given us lots of really useful information uh, about the values along the body of the region. Um, now let's have a look um, over here. Um, so we have a sum here that is the sum of 6 and something else. So what could this be? Well you'd immediately think 7, 8, 9 um, which would make this 1, 2 or 3. But in fact we have a 3 here so that can't be a 3. And if that can't be a 3, then this can't be a 9. Um, but this is 7 or 8. Um, and in fact, just looking at the, the ones I pencil marked down here, this can't actually be a 1. Because um, if this was a 1, this would be an 8. And we already have an 8. So in fact, we instantly only have three locations for the 1 in this column. Um, OK, now we'll just look at one final um, use of arrow logic to start to reduce the options. Um, so let's look at this box and let's look at this square in particular. Um, it's a bit of a hot spot because we've got four givens in this row um, and most of the grid has very, very few givens applying to it at all. So we can see we, in fact we've got six, seven, eight or nine. So this can be five at best and it could be two, three, four, which means that these squares here along its body are 1, 2, 3 and 4 um, at max. So that's actually very, very useful. And we can see now we've done this pencil marking that we can reduce the options for the 9 in this box. And interestingly, the 9 doesn't actually go in either of these two squares, as you can see. It can't go here, here or here. It can't go here, here or here. It can't go here because that's along the body of an arrow. So in fact, our 9 must go in one of these two squares in this box and you can see we're starting to make good progress now okay so that's how to solve uh, our sudoku the rules and then looking at how you can use the logic to start to whittle down the options and try to lock in some of the higher values and some of the lower values in the grid and it's really how you start um, solving these puzzles so we hope you found it useful uh, please do like and subscribe to our channel to be notified about other solving videos we release and thanks for watching goodbye